Hi there, I'm Kath. Welcome to my channel Made by Cathcraft. Thank you very much for joining me today. My channel is all about sewing, about fabrics and sewing patterns and I sometimes throw a bit of knitting in too. And if you haven't subscribed already, I would love it if you'd subscribe to hear more all about my sewing journey and on my way to creating a handmade wardrobe. So today's vlog, I'm going to be talking about um, some questions that you guys have asked me. Um, so a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned I was thinking of doing a Q&A vlog, answering any questions sewing related or non-sewing related that you might have. And I wasn't sure if people would be interested, but actually I got quite a few questions. So thank you so much to everybody who asked a question. I had some questions that are really interesting, I thought, and I really enjoyed having a think about them. And I'm really looking forward to sharing the answers. So this vlog's going to be all about that. Um, I had quite a few questions. So what I've done is I've split them up into kind of different sections a little bit. And um, in this vlog, I'm going to talk about my sewing journey and how I got started on sewing. And I'm going to share a few of my earlier makes. Um, I'm going to talk about sewing equipment I use and budgeting and also about um, how I fit sewing into my life. <laughs> so um, those are the areas I'm going to talk about and I'm looking forward to getting started. So before I get started on answering your questions, I thought I'd share with you what I'm wearing today as usual. And today is a really nice sunny day actually here in the south of England, which is lovely. And so I've got on one of my favourite woven dresses and I made it using this pattern here and it is the Hinterland dress pattern by So Liberated. And it's a really lovely woven dress pattern. I made a few versions, but this is my first version, and I think possibly my favorite version too. And I'll show you the line drawings. So it's a woven dress pattern with buttons, a button down front, you can either do a sort of half, um, uh, just a bod the bodice with a button placket, or you can do a full placket all the way down the front. It's got lots of different options for sleeves, so you can do sleeveless, a kind of bias bound finish, or um, different length sleeves, and it's got different skirt lengths too, and it's a gathered skirt and it has pockets, and also optional waist ties to cinch in at the waist. So it's a really lovely um, kind of all-rounder woven um, dress pattern, and it's got a really good size range too, it goes from size 0 to size 34, um, I've got the printed pattern which goes from size 0 to 24, but it is available up to size 34. Um, see, so yeah, it's a really lovely pattern, and um, this is the first version of it I made, and as I said, possibly my favourite. And I made it in this lovely, it's a cotton linen blend fabric that I got from Sew Me Sunshine quite a while ago. But it's quite nice, actually, because um, I think gingham's really in this year, so I was quite pleased I had this one in my wardrobe already. Um, and so, yeah, I made um, the short sleeve version, and then I added the waist ties, as you can see, it ties at the back. And I did the um, placket just on the bodice and added on little buttons. Um, yeah, it was a bit of a um, faff cutting out, I guess, as it always is with um, um, gingham. It you know, had to sort of match two ways with the stripes, but I'm pleased with how it turned out. Um, and I'll put a picture up of me wearing it so you can see how it looks. Um, I made the size zero on this, which is um, smaller than my measurements. Um, the measurements for size zero, bust 31, waist 25, hips 33.5. And I'm... 32, 26, 36. But actually, when I looked at the finished garment measurements on this, it came up quite roomy. Um, so I thought I'd size down to give it a bit of more fitted look. And so I really love wearing this one. It's really comfy to wear and I really like this fabric. It's kind of like a navy sort of colour. I think it comes up a bit black on the camera, but it's sort of a navy colour. Yeah, and no, it's really comfy to wear. So I was glad to be able to get out on a sunny, sunny, sunny day today. Um, but now let me move on to answering some of your questions. Oh, I thought I'd mention also, if you do fancy um, seeing the other versions of the Hinterland dress I've made, I did a vlog talking all about my favourite woven dress patterns, and I showed in that vlog all my different versions of the Hinterland dress. So I'll include a link up just in case you fancy checking that out and seeing the other versions I made. And now let me move on to answering some of your questions. And the first question I got asked by a few people actually, so thank you to everyone who asked, was about the start of my sewing journey. So how, how and when I got into sewing and what got me started in the first place. And I think I started sewing when my son was younger, probably when he was about two, so maybe about six years ago, because he's eight now. But for the first three or so years of sewing, I didn't sew any garments. I mainly just sewed crafty bits and bobs. And I didn't sew that often. It was just every now and then, because I was also getting into knitting at that time as well. Um, so I first of all, I think when yeah, when my son was about two, we'd moved into our house. I'd kind of enjoyed decorating it, done the painting, wallpapering, that sort of thing. I sort of finished those tasks. My son was starting to sleep a bit better. I had a bit of time in the evenings and being a stay at home mum with my son, which, is, which has been really lovely. I'm really grateful I could do it. It did mean I wasn't really using my brain in a kind of creative way in the day, I guess. And I didn't really have anything for myself so much um, and it didn't have work and um, I was just pretty much doing the mum stuff. So I really wanted to have some t something to do that will be a bit more for me and get me thinking and maybe learning some new skills. So I thought I'd give some sewing a go. 
So yeah, that was about maybe six years ago or so. So I started off with a couple of small crafty projects and I was using my granny's machine at the time because um, after she died, um, I got gifted that. My mum already had her own machine. My sister had her own machine. So I got my granny's machine, which is lovely. And it was a really old Toyota from the 60s. It didn't have an instruction manual or anything. So, um, and it was really basic, but it was great to get started on and see if I enjoyed sewing. So I started on my granny's old machine and I made some crafty projects and one of the first things I made was just some cushions for our kind of playroom area. Um, yeah, then they're still going strong actually, I made them in this cloud print and um, they've got a, um, a zip on the bottom so I enjoyed learning a new skill of inserting a zip. And I just really enjoyed doing it and I enjoyed choosing the fabric and planning the project and so I wanted to keep going on that. So I thought I'd share a couple of my other kind of pre-garment sewing crafty projects. One was that I made a tooth cushion for my son. And I kind of just designed this myself just for a bit of fun and stuffed it with toy filling. So it's a little tooth shape and it's got a little pocket here where you can put the tooth in or the money from the tooth fairy. Um, so that's um, my son's one. Then I went on to make one for my daughter too. So there's two of them here. And they're just a bit of fun to make and my children like them and it gave me pleasure to make them. And then one other project I made that was a crafty one was um, to make some um, fabric flowers for our house. So I thought they'd brighten things up and when the children were little um, it was more practical just having these fabric ones up rather than going to get fresh flowers or anything but I thought they'd brighten things up um, and I made these using an, a tutorial on YouTube actually that was my, one of my early um, um, crafty sort of um, forays into YouTube and if I can find a link to the tutorial I'll include it down below I don't know how easy it'll be to find it now because I made these so long ago but they're a lot of fun to make and they're still again going strong. I made some of their tulips um, in a kind of pale yellow colour and they're still sitting in our living room on the um, mantelpiece um, and I like them still. So yeah, those are a few of my early crafty projects that I made before I got into garment sewing. And so that was, um, yeah, a few years ago and I was doing a bit of that and a bit of knitting and um, hadn't really thought about making my own clothes at all. And then one day I somehow managed to join a group on Facebook. I don't even know how I joined it. I don't know um, if maybe my son was playing with my phone and managed to press the join button and it popped up as a recommended group for me. But I got this some notification saying, you've joined this sewing group um, on Facebook. So I was like, okay. Um, I had a little look on there and I was just really amazed by the makes on there and how people have made things that look so good and fitted so well. And I think before I joined that group, I hadn't really got much of an idea about sewing um, handmade clothing, but I had an idea it maybe looked a bit handmade. And then I realised actually you can make amazing clothing, it doesn't look handmade at all, using lovely materials and make it fit you too. So I thought I'd really like to give it a go. And I think at that point I'd been a stay at home mum for a few years, I'd been wearing the same old clothes, they were getting quite tired and worn, I needed some new clothes anyway and it was really lovely to be able to actually do something that was not only a kind of project for me in the evenings but also gave me some new clothes to make me feel good about myself and that fit me really nicely too. Um, so I started from there and once I started I really never looked back. So the next question I got asked which I think leads quite nicely from the start of my sewing journey was did I have a creative past before I started sewing which kind of led me to where I am now. And I had a little think about it and I think I have always been quite creative actually. I've always really enjoyed doing arty things. Um, when I was little I know I was one of those children that was always there with pieces of paper, gluing, sticking, making cards for my friends, of my mum and my sister. And then I, as I got a bit older, I loved making friendship bracelets when that trend came in. So yeah, I really enjoyed um, that kind of any kind of creative trend that came in. As a teenager, I did cross stitching actually. I really enjoyed doing some cross stitching. I haven't done that since, but I would like to give that another go. And um, I also did art um, up to GCSE level and I really enjoyed it. But then I went on to choose um, less creative A levels. And I think when I went on to do A levels and up to university, the creative side of me just kind of got put aside for a while I think and um, I, I think I didn't realise I missed it until I, I think it was when I started to prepare for getting married and I really enjoyed doing some creative things and then I made um, our invitations and the table plan and just different things like that I really enjoyed and I found it a real tonic um, from um, my job which is more serious and I'll talk about that in a bit um, so it was really lovely to have that creative side again. So I think that sort of re-sparked my interest in doing something creative and reminded me how relaxing and how mindful it can be. And then after um, my, my children were born and had a bit more time to think about what I wanted to do and really spend some time on developing some hobbies, um, that was when it really hit. And I started um, doing a bit of crafty sewing. And also my mum taught me some basic knitting stitches. And then I sort of taught myself a bit more by working my way through a knitting book. And I went on, I thought I'd show you a couple of my early knitting projects too. 
I made made some dolls clothes. This is kind of like a little hot pink cardigan for a doll, which I really enjoy making. And another little sort of romper from um, the dolls. So yeah, I really enjoyed doing that sort of thing. And so, and then once I started knitting and started um, making little mini clothes and started doing the crafty sewing, it kind of led me to where I am now doing the garment sewing and just really enjoying um, yeah, spending time doing crafts. It was relaxing, I find it mindful. And yeah, that's where I am now. <laughs> so I mentioned my job briefly before. And a few of you did ask what I did as a job before I had children. And I worked for a fair few years um, before I had children. And I um, worked as an accountant. So it really wasn't a creative job at all. So um, I started at university and I did German and business studies. And it was a lot of fun. I got to spend a year in Germany as part of my degree, which is lovely. Um, and then after that, I went on to um, join one of the big four accountancy firms. And I studied for three years for my chartered accountancy qualification. And then I went on to work as a fully fledged accountant. And I stayed at that firm until I left when I had my son. So, um, yeah, it was not at all um, creative. And I think um, going forward, um, when I go back to work at some point, I would love to do something that does have a creative aspect to it because um, I do really enjoy that. Um, but yeah, it was it was fine. It paid the bills. Um, I learned lots of skills. Um, one lovely lady uh, mentioned um, in her comment on YouTube that I have quite a detailed approach to looking at patterns. And I guess um, that is the accounting side in me I do um it was all about you know looking at the details obviously accountancy and things so I guess I learned some um, good skills from it um and confidence as well in dealing with different people and that sort of thing so that yeah I learned a lot of good skills from it but I wouldn't say it was something that I loved or was passionate about by any means um and I would like to be able to find a career in the future that I am passionate about a bit more like I am about my sewing but that's what I did before I had children so now moving back to um, more of a, another sewing question, again, to do with the start of my sewing journey, I was asked what was the first pattern I ever sewed for garments? And it was a basic pair of pajama bottoms. Um, and I use this pattern here, which is the Simplicity 1520A. I think when I started sewing, I wasn't really aware of um, indie sewing patterns and I have got more into them the more I've sewn. But um, I started off with some of these um, patterns by the um, bigger sewing pattern company. So it's just a basic um, elasticated waist pajama bottoms and I've got them here because I still wear them. So they're a success. And they're these ones here um, in this really cute um, kind of quilting cotton weight cotton with little clouds on. Um, yeah, so I really love this fabric. Um, that's why I still wear them and they're still going strong. And um, that was my first make. Um, yeah, um, I think at that point I was quite lucky that what I ordered on the fabric front was something suitable for pyjamas because um, I now I know there's so many different types of cotton, it could easily have been something that wasn't quite right or maybe too lightweight for a pair of winter pyjamas or something like that. But they're, they're really snuggly and cosy and that was the first garment I made. Um, and I was really pleased actually with them because um, with pyjama bottoms, I'm five foot six, but even at five foot six, I really struggled to find pyjama bottoms that are long enough um, when I bought ready to wear ones. And so I was really tickled, I think when I started sewing, that I could lengthen them and make them as long as I wanted. Um, to make sure they keep my ankles cosy too. So yeah, when I um, made these, I made them extra long. I'm glad I did, I think, because I don't think I even knew about pre-washing or anything then, so they probably have got a bit shorter because I made them so super long. They're still nice and long, and I love that about sewing, that you can adjust it and make it just right for you because I used to hate having short pyjama bottoms. Anyway, the next question I got asked was what was the first garment I made that I really considered a success? And I guess my pyjama bottoms were a success, but when I got asked that question, um, there's one garment that came to mind, and I think it was the first knit garment I sewed. Because before I started sewing, I wasn't really aware that you could sew um, with stretchy fabrics. And I thought that was really great when I started sewing, particularly at that point where I wasn't too confident with fitting and making adjustments for fit. I loved that you could make something stretchy and that would kind of like the ease would kind of end up, it would fit in you quite nicely just because it kind of yeah, stretched around your shape. So the first garment I sewed up that I considered um, a real success was using another of the big four pattern company patterns, which is this one here. And it's still a pattern I use a lot today which is the McCall's M7561. So it's a really lovely jersey dress pattern. It comes with loads of different variations. I'll show you all the different variations. Um, yes, it's a basic kind of jersey sort of t-shirt dress with a gathered skirt. You can make kind of like a standard t-shirt dress, it's, but you can make a dipped back option. You can have pockets, you can make it sleeveless and um, different lengths. So yeah, loads of different versions included in this pattern. And um, yeah, I kind of um, didn't realise that sewing with knits was something that was considered to be, I guess, a bit challenging to start with. So I just kind of gave it a go. But um, I was a bit conscious of budget and not wanting to spoil fabrics. 
um, in case it totally didn't fit. So I made my first version using a um, jersey bed sheet that I'd got um, that was just really cheap. And so I gave it a go and I actually made two versions because I had so much, I think it was like a double bed sheet. So there's loads of fabric. It might have been, I don't know, maybe it was even a super king. I don't know. I had loads of fabric anyway. So I made two versions in this kind of navy jersey bed sheet. So I made a long sleeve version, which you can see here, and a um, short sleeve version, again, pretty similar, um, just with short sleeves. I think I experimented on each of them by moving the um, waistline a little bit. So one of them's got a slightly higher waist and one that's got a slightly lower waist. But I was really um, pleased with how they came out, actually, and they came out better than I expected. And I went, I, I made those with a view to making my kind of actual popper version, my non twelve version, which I made in this lovely fabric here, which is a really nice quality cotton jersey. And it's been wash, worn and washed a load, and it's still, um, is, yeah, really nice quality and still looks really good. And it's kind of nautical print um, jersey, which I later saw on the sewing bee, which is quite exciting. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's my final version. But I actually thought the twirls were quite a success too. And um, yeah, once I started sewing with jersey, that is really when I never looked back. And I went um, on to make loads of other jersey dresses that were just so comfy and wearable. And when I had small children and I could get down the floor with them in jersey dresses and they're really comfy and practical and stretchy. So yeah, that's the first um, garment I considered a success, my two jersey bedsheet dresses. And I'll put a picture up of me wearing one of them so you can see just how they look. Um, I was quite pleased with the fit. I spent a while tweaking it, you know, just um, gradually sewing the lines in to kind of get the right fit around my waist. And it was nice to be able to have a play with it without feeling like I might wreck some um, expensive, lovely fabric. I also got asked what was the first um, indie pattern that I sewed. And um, that was this pattern here which is the Clio um, dungaree dress by Tilling the Buttons. Um, and I kind of came across Tilling the Buttons quite early. I had a friend who was um, working her way through the Love at First Stitch book. And so I kind of um, was interested and I didn't buy that book, but I had a look at Tilly's patterns and I thought I'd give this one a go because I thought a dungaree dress would be quite a nice thing to have. Um, it's just a really basic kind of straight fit dungaree dress. You can do a sort of mini skirt length one or a slightly longer one with a little split. You can add pockets and you can um, use buttons or um, sort of dungaree clips to um, fasten it. And I um, actually enjoyed sewing this pattern and enjoyed the dungaree dress so much, I made two in quick succession. And I've actually um, handed on one version because it was one of those fabrics I ordered online early on and the colour wasn't exactly what I expected. I kind of ordered a mustard colour and it came out a little bit of kind of a darker mustard and it didn't really suit me very well. So I handed that one on. Um, but I have got one of those um, um, two dungaree dresses left, st um, here, left still and I wear it loads and loads and loads. And here it is. Um, it's this navy sort of needle cord, quite fine needle cord. And this is before I had an overlock, so you can see the edges are a little bit tatty. They're um, zigzagged, so they aren't fraying anymore, but they have frayed a little bit up to the zigzag. So yeah, it's not the best inside finish. And I finished it with these um, dungaree buckles um, in silver. But I absolutely love it. I wear it loads. It's really nice and comfy and soft because it's a needle cord. And um, if it does um, one day sort of die, I'll definitely be remaking it again exactly the same because um, I love it. So yeah, that was my first um, indie pattern too. Um, Clio dungaree dresses and, and this one still gets loads of wear so that was that so that those questions sort of cover my category of the start of my sewing journey and now I'm going to move on to my next category of questions which is um, fitting sewing into my life so I got asked by a few people how do you find time for sewing in your life being a mum and that sort of thing and um, it has kind of changed um, as uh, my life has changed. When my children were a bit smaller and they were both at home um, and not going to school or anything like that, I pretty much only sewed um, in the evenings um, or occasionally a little bit of time at the weekends if my husband took them out to the park for an hour or two. But it was pretty much exclusively sewing in the evenings. And I was quite... Um, yeah, I was quite sort of focused on it, I guess. So we'd get them down to bed and as soon as we'd had dinner, I'd pretty much have my sewing machine out on the dining table and I'd get sewing. And I was enjoying it so much, I didn't stop until we went to bed. So I'd have a good couple of hours of sewing in the evening. And um, that was the way I fitted it in. So even though I was often tired in the evenings after looking after the children and all that sort of thing, I found sewing, it almost, um, it didn't make me tired, it almost rejuvenated me a little bit, a bit, because it kind of was so mindful and relaxing. I felt like it kind of gave me a little bit of myself back. So yeah, when they were little, it was very much sewing in the evenings and I really kind of wanted to do it. So I did do it in the evenings, even if I was tired. And then um, as they've got a bit older, um, I guess 
Um, now they're both at school, I have the luxury of being able to sew a bit in the days and um, I don't sew every day in the day by any means, but I do try and carve out one morning a week where I do just enjoy myself and do some sewing or some cutting out. And it's really lovely actually because I am naturally more of a morning person, so it's really nice to be able to focus on it in the morning and I feel like I'm a bit quicker than I would be when I'm in the evening and um, I can find I make decisions a bit better in terms of fitting and adjustments and that sort of thing, so I really value being able to do that on a morning a week. And I don't really do any sewing now at the weekends um, because um, I want to spend that time with my children because they're at school and I don't see them so much in the week. So yeah, the sewing is really um, in the week during the day when they're not around. And I had been um, doing some knitting in the evenings more recently, actually, because I had that time to sew in the day. But um, I'm, I've hurt my arm a little bit from knitting. Um, I think I've got a bit of a strain on my shoulder or something. So maybe I'll do a bit more sewing in the evenings. Um, we'll see. Um, my husband has to put up the sound of the sewing machine in the evenings if I do sew in the evenings. But luckily, he's um, quite kind on that front and doesn't mind too much if we're trying to watch something on TV and I'm going in the background with the overlocker. <laughs> Sometimes he pauses if it gets really loud so he doesn't miss anything but luckily he does tolerate it pretty well um but that was that and how much time do I send, spend sewing was another question I got asked and that really does vary um depending on um, my mood what I've got on so um I do try and I definitely do sew at least once a week pretty much most weeks um but it some weeks I'll be there um doing a whole day of sewing on one day if I can fit it in. Another week I won't do any sewing during the week and I'll maybe squeeze a bit into the evenings. But I find as long as I do a little bit every now and then just to keep the wet edge going, it makes me feel happy and I do like having a project on the go. So what time I have that's free, I will do it. But um, yeah, sometimes it doesn't end up being that much time. <laughs> I also got asked, what is the piece of fabric that I've had in my stash the longest? And um, that was an easy one to answer actually because um, I only have one piece of fabric that I've had for a long time and I don't have a big stash at all. I've actually been trying to reduce it down even more recently and I've got it down to about five or so pieces of uncut fabric and um, I'm really pleased I've done that because I find I don't like having a big fabric stash. I find it a bit pressurising. Um, when I look at it I think oh I should be sewing with you. Um, I don't like having it sitting around, it makes me feel a bit bad so yeah I'm really pleased I've got my stash down to a very small amount of uncut cut fabric but I do have one piece that's been in my stash for a bit longer and there is a reason for it and um, it's this fabric here and it's a lovely stretch cotton fabric and I got this maybe a couple of years ago from John Lewis and it was on sale it was a really good price so I was really pleased to get it because I think it's really pretty it's kind of this sort of like sort of deep blue colour with um, sort of orangey red and lighter blue flowers on I think it's really pretty and I like the colour and I bought this um, thinking I would love to make a dress um, for a special occasion using it. And I thought because it's stretch cotton, it'll be perfect. So I can make sort of like a fitted dress, but it'll be quite comfy because it's got the stretch in it. So I bought it um, thinking I'd maybe be able to make it for maybe um, a wedding or an evening event. Um, but since then, obviously COVID happened and I haven't been um, to any events like that really. Um, there's usually a Christmas party at my husband's work that obviously hasn't happened. Um, one of um, my husband's brothers was due to be getting married. That got postponed because of COVID. Um, so yeah, this kind of fabric's been sitting on the back burner waiting for a special occasion. And I haven't wanted to sew it up in the meantime because I thought I wasn't sure if my sort of choice of style of pattern would change. So I thought I'd leave it until we definitely have a special occasion coming up and then I'll start looking for pattern and make a final choice. So I'm looking forward to sewing with it at some point. I do have a plan for it, but it has been sitting in my stash for quite a while now and it does seem a shame that I'm not able to wear it, but I'm really looking forward to when I do have a chance to wear it. My next category of questions is around sewing equipment and budget. And I got asked what sewing machine do I use? And I use a FAF um, sewing machine. It is the FAF Ambition 1.0. And I don't think um, FAF manufacture that machine anymore. I think they've um, changed their ambition range. So it now, instead of starting at the 1.0, they start at the 610 and it goes up from there. But it's a computerised machine. I think it's not FAF's entry level machine. I think that's called the Passport, but it's the next one up. Um, and um, yeah, I'll put a picture up so you can see it. I love that it's a bit pink, um, but I didn't choose it because it was pink. I am... Um, as I mentioned before, I started on my granny's old Toyota machine, but it was very limited. It didn't have an um, instruction manual. I tried to find one online even, and I couldn't find one. Um, and so I was really looking to upgrade and get something that had a few of the features that I wanted, having done a little bit of sewing. 
So I went to um, a local sewing machine shop in a local town and they stock a few different types of sewing machines and I had a go of them and I just really fell in love with the faff machines. I found them really, they made sense how they worked and um, I ended up spending a bit more than I was planning to because I just loved the ambition and um, it had so many amazing features. And actually at that time I was only doing crafty sewing. I wasn't doing garment sewing, but I'm really glad I did spend a bit more than I planned to because actually it stopped me needing to upgrade at a later point because it does everything I really want it to. It does the one step buttonholes. It handles lots of different fabrics. It's really great and I really love it. And one of my favorite things about my machine is it has an IDT, a built-in system, which is like a built-in walking foot. And it really makes a huge difference. Um, I use it for pretty much everything. And if I ever do leave it off when I've taken the foot off and forgotten to kind of put the IDT system back in, I really notice the difference in how the fabric feeds through. It doesn't feed through as evenly. So I love that it's just built in. I don't have any of a faff of attaching like a separate walking foot. But I really recommend faff sewing machines. It's been a real workhorse. It handles everything I throw at it. Um, yeah, I really love it. And then in terms of overlocker, um, I went for kind of a fairly basic overlocker because when I bought my overlocker, I was still fairly new to um, making clothes. I wasn't sure um, how much I'd be using it at that point. So I've got a Brother 3034 DWT. I think the WT means with tray, um, which is quite handy, actually, the little tray to get all the scraps in. Um, it's quite a basic overlocker, but I really um, like it. Um, the tension always comes out really well. I never have any problems with it. It's quite easy to thread as well. I don't mind threading it. Um, it's not too much of a job. Um, so that, that's why I use the Faf Ambition 1.0 and the Brother 3034 DWT. I also got asked a couple of different questions around budgeting for sewing as a hobby. And the first one was, how do I budget or do I budget for buying um, sewing patterns and fabric? And the answer is I don't have a strict budget of, say, X amount per month for um, my hobby of sewing. I, I do keep track of what I spend, which I think um, does rein me in itself because I'm conscious of how much money I am spending. And so say if I have spent a bit more one month, then I'd be really aware of it. And the next month I probably wouldn't spend as much. So I'm kind of mindful of it, but there isn't one particular amount or limit. My husband is quite supportive as well, so he does encourage me to spend a bit of money on it. He knows it's a hobby that I find relaxing, it's beneficial for my mental health, um, makes me happy and more relaxed. So um, yeah, he does encourage me to spend money on it. But again, I always do um, keep track of what I'm spending and um, I do generally try to sew what I buy. I think um, personally for myself, as I mentioned before, I don't have a huge stash. I think if I was buying a lot of fabrics, popping them in my stash and not using them, I would find that a bit uncomfortable for me. So I do try only to buy um, fabric when I've got a specific pattern in mind and I know what I'm going to make. The odd thing does slip through, but not too many. <laughs> Leading on from that quite nicely, I also got asked, um, do you have a cap that you won't go over for, for a certain fabric or per month? So it's like a cap on spending. And again, it's not, I don't have a sort of set cap, um, but I do, I am conscious of how much fabrics cost. I do, um, I am a bit more cautious when they are more expensive fabrics. So I have got some garments I've made out of more expensive fabrics and brands like Atelier Brunette and those sort of um, CU6 and those sort of kind of, um, kind of, I guess, more expensive brands. But when I um, do buy those fabrics, I am quite careful in terms of uh, making sure I know what I'm going to make and I know it's going to work. And if it's a, um, a pattern I haven't tried before and I'm a little bit unsure about, I would do a twirl first before I do um, cut into any more expensive fabrics. So I don't sort of rule out fabrics by their expense particularly, um, but when I do buy them, I am quite careful around making sure I'm going to make good use out of them. And I do usually have a think in my mind about you know, um, how many meters I'll need of this, how much would that cost then in terms of fabric to make the dress or whatever I'm making. And if it starts to feel like it's getting too expensive, then that makes me feel a bit more uncomfortable and I wouldn't necessarily enjoy it as much either, um, particularly because I've got two young children and I want to be able to wear things I can enjoy and not worry too much about them getting um, dirty or, um, you know, spoiled in any way. So yeah, I'm kind of bear that in mind that I wouldn't want to make anything that's too expensive that I wouldn't be able to then enjoy being with them and going to a park and climbing around and that sort of thing. <laughs> so the next question I got asked in terms of sewing equipment was what sewing equipment do I have on my wish list and why? And I thought it was a really great question and I was a bit disappointed actually that I don't have more on my wish list, but I really don't have much on my wish list at the moment. Um, and I guess I've been sewing, um, it'll be coming up to three years um, this sort of um, autumn since I've been sewing garments. So I've kind of accumulated all the sort of basic tools I need, you know, um, pattern weights and clips and pins and scissors and all the basics. 
so I don't really need anything too much. Um, and I, have, I, I do have a little list on my phone that I keep. And as I go through the year, if I think of any sewing equipment, I think, oh, that'd be nice to have. I pop it on that list so that when I get towards Christmas or my birthday, I can have a look there and have some ideas for presents um, because otherwise I'd really struggle to think of what I'd want. Um, and I had a look on my list and I've only got one thing on it, um, which is a bit disappointing in a way. And that was a needle minder. And I've seen some really lovely needle minders recently, actually. I think one of the recent So Haley Jane boxes had a little resin needle minder in it, which looked really cute. And I hadn't really come across them before. But I thought that'd be a really great idea because see when I'm knitting I'm often knitting on the sofa when I get to sewing up and I've got the little knitting needles the sort of small ones to sort of do the sewing up I'm always losing them down the side of the sofa and I think um I spend half the time with my arm like sort of jammed down the side of the sofa just like rootling around trying to find this little knitting needle um so I thought a needle mind would be perfect actually for my knitting needles so that's on my list for next Christmas um but other than that there isn't too much actually at the moment and I guess you can get all these kind of cool whizzy gadgets but actually um you don't really need them. The basics do just fine. And um, also I haven't got that much space for my sewing stuff. I don't have a dedicated sewing room. I use a dining table and I've got a kind of a ta little table in the kitchen that I store my sewing equipment on and there's really not so much space on there. So I'm conscious that I don't want to accumulate too much because I don't have the space to store it. So I try and keep my equipment a bit more limited and to the basics. So yeah, there's not too much on my sewing equipment wish list, which does seem a bit of a shame, but I'll be keeping my eye out in case any other um, little tools um, catch my eye um, before Christmas. So we, who knows what might end up on my list by then. So that was the last question that I'm going to include in this um, Q&A vlog, because I'm conscious I don't want it to get too long and I want to be able to answer the questions properly. So I'm going to do a separate vlog where I talk about some of the other questions you've asked um, around sewing style, tried and true patterns and some sewing hints and tips you've asked about. So I'm going to go away and make sure I prepare those questions and make sure I can answer those ones properly too. So thank you so much for watching this vlog. If you've enjoyed hearing a little bit about my sewing journey um, and how I fit sewing into my life, my sewing equipment and all that sort of thing, I would love it if you give this vlog a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, obviously I would love it if you would subscribe too and click the bell icon so you hear about my future vlogs, including um, some more answers to some of your questions. So thank you so much for watching this vlog. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you again soon. Bye.